In this video, we're going to look at having Band in a Box generate a solo for us. Now, there's two ways to use soloists in Band in a Box. We can use the best soloist feature, where it chooses soloists based on the style and other factors that are used in the arrangement, or we can select the soloists ourselves, and they both have their pros and cons. Now, for the best soloist, we can go to the soloist track and right-click on here, and we can go select best soloist, and it brings up this dialog box. I'm just going to hit cancel for the moment, or we can use the soloist button and go to add best real track soloist, and we can just shift-click the button for that. And the other way to select the soloist manually is to click here and choose this or control-click. Now, let's use the best soloist feature to start with. Now, it lists the solos from best to least best. I don't want to say worst, but the ones that match the least are down lower. For example, different fields, etc. So we can choose and we can filter if I want to type a word in here or whatever. But let's say I'm just going to choose harmonica. And I can choose from favorites, of course, and those are the recently selected ones that you've been using. And we can specify between different types of solos. Maybe I want to exclude ones with background or with variations, whatever. We can audition them here, of course, either by pressing this button or just double clicking on one of these. So maybe I'll just look at this sax solo one. I'll double click on it. And I'll go OK and generate now. And we're going to see it loaded into the soloist slot. There's a the soloist. And we can look at it in notation. So make sure in notation that you're clicking on the appropriate button here. We're looking at the soloist track so we can actually see what they're playing. And I'm just going to press chord sheet to go back to our regular view. Now, in this case, it generated a solo and it's playing it throughout the arrangement. We can always use the bar settings to customize where and when it's going to play. So for example, maybe I want that sax one to be muted. And maybe I want it to be muted only for the first chorus. I can determine that here. And then let's go. I just did it for all choruses. Let's go back and put it to through for all choruses. And for the first chorus, maybe I want it muted. And then for the second chorus, maybe I want it back to normal at that point. So you can set your specifications for the details for each instrument on each chorus like that, and I can hit OK and that'll do it. Now, the other thing we can do is use the select soloist. I'm going to control click here. And this gives us a kind of broader palette to choose from. Now we can specify soloist types here. Maybe I want to go to even 16th notes. And here it's showing all the genres, but I can deselect that and choose different genres, maybe funk or whatever, bluegrass, etc. I'm going to go back to all genres for now. And one thing to be aware of is that real track solos start at number 361. You see they're all numbered here, and there's names of the different styles that they're in. So we can scroll down, you'll see they're a different color, but starting there are real track solos. So here we get more details. We can go back to the best real tracks, by the way, by clicking that button. We can go to our favorites here as well and see the recently selected ones. And here we get a little description of what's going on. And here we can generate harmonies with them and decide what instrument is used. But here's where the real power lies. Now we can have it solo as normal. We can have it just do fills. We can have it solo around the melody. We can even have it trade fours. And if we press this button, Band in a Box will go first. We have a solo wizard where we can customize exactly what's going to happen during the solo. And we have a custom button, which I'll look at in a moment. I really like this function. But first, we have here some presets in terms of where we want the soloing to happen in the first chorus, only if there's no melody, or always in the first chorus, never in the first chorus. Same thing for the middle. Maybe yes, you always want it to solo, or only if there's no melody, or no. And same thing for last chorus, the same choices. And these are kind of presets here. It's soloing all the way through or this is the preset for melody, not to solo if there's a melody, solo in the middle, and then not again at the end if there's a melody. But what I really like is this custom feature. So let's choose one of these soloists first. I'm just going to scroll around. I'll choose another sax one, maybe this one here, hip rock. Now I'm going to go to custom, and here we can specify where exactly we want it to start. Now, for example, I want it to start only bar 21. This is in here because I already did it before I started this video, but Let's say I want to generate a short solo just at bar 21 to last 12 bars, and I can optionally have it overlap for an extra beat and overwrite what's there. I'm going to go generate solo now, and it'll create a solo in those bars. Play from here. Let's play right from here. So there I've got a real 
solo with real instrument phrase adapted to my chords, and I can look at the notation here, and it's a great learning tool. So that's an idea for how to use the soloist. And if we want to have any of the other instruments solo instead, we can always right click, like for example, maybe I want a guitar solo at some point. I can click there and choose best soloist for real tracks. and It'll come up on that track and I can choose guitar solos and instantiate one there for that if I don't want to use the separate dedicated soloist track. So that's working with the soloist. We'll continue with more in the next video.